Hey guys, I'm back with another update. This is going to be one of those faceless videos so I can get this video out to you quickly. And this one's all about showing you how the 3D printed parts contribute to the horizontal and vertical movements. Quick note, if you are enjoying the content I'm creating, please share your thoughts in the comment section. I really love going through them and replying. And don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get serious. I've successfully 3D printed some of the parts I talked about in my last video. Check that out if you haven't already. I was a bit nervous about printing multiple parts in one go. My 3D printer has a large build volume, so I decided to take the risk. The good news is I had about 99% success. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I did a bunch of calibration and test prints before printing these parts in groups. Except for a small sharp corner on the ball pipe ending part, everything came out pretty well. Thankfully, I can still use the ball pipe ending since the issue isn't a deal breaker. I then started putting the pieces together. Here you see me assembling the horizontal movement module, which includes the worm gear, its housing, its coupling to the motor, and the base swivel plate that sits on a lazy Susan bearing. Together, this module will be responsible for swiveling the motor and the wheels. I did run into one problem though. The code I wrote initially assumed a one-to-one -one ratio between the motor's rotation and the module's rotation. But using gears meant I had to revise that. The base plate has 48 teeth in total, and I wanted to move it in six degree increments. This meant I needed to move 0.8 of a tooth to achieve a six degree movement. But then I had to figure out how much the worm gear had to rotate to achieve the six degree movement on the base plate. Luckily, the worm gear to base plate ratio was one to one, meaning a full rotation on the worm gear results in a one tooth movement on the base plate. In other words, rotating the worm gear 0.8 of a revolution moves 0.8 of a tooth on the base plate resulting in a 6 degree rotation of the ball throwing motors assembly. But the code doesn't understand degrees, right? So I had to convert it to steps. Upon further checks, I noticed my rotary encoder had 3600 steps for one full rotation of the motor's shaft. That was a nice round number. I then calculated it to be approximately 2,900 steps for a 6 degree movement. So the code now instructs the motor to move in 2,900 steps. But remember, I employ dynamic movement to ensure the motors don't go out of control. I explained this in detail in part 4 of this video series, so if you haven't checked that out, head over after this one. <laughs> I have a feeling that I really butchered that explanation, didn't I? Anyway. I hope the demo helps explain it better than my narration. Moving on to the vertical movement, I 3D printed the gears but I'm yet to print the vertical arm because that part needs to be made of ABS material and I'm still calibrating my 3D printer for that. To test the logic, I improvised. You can see how I did it. The goal is to move in 9 degree increments. Why 9? I don't know, I just picked a number and I'm going with it for now. I might change it when I test the machine out on the field. Okay, the larger gear has 120 teeth and the smaller one has 20 teeth. So that's a nice 1 to 6 ratio. For the larger gear to move 9 degrees, I needed the smaller gear to move 54 degrees. Remember the machine isn't super precise. There are time delays and other factors that cause deviations. That's okay for my machine though and my code should self correct to an extent. Here's how it looks in action. Testing the angles using the app was great. I can't say the app is perfect, but it gives me enough confidence that my calculations were right and more importantly that the machine is doing what it's supposed to. Lastly, I also printed the ball pipe fittings and here's how they look. The top end attaches to the underside of the top panel where the ball container sits and the other end connects to the vertical fixed arm and will move along with it. So there you go guys. Three modules are kind of ready. The horizontal motion, the vertical motion, and the ball chute connecting the container to the motors. Next, I'll be printing the vertical fixed arm using ABS filament and assembling all these modules together. I'm still waiting on the motors and the wheels to arrive, so I won't print the motor mounts just yet. I need to make sure the hardware matches the 3D models before I press print. That's it team, let me know what you think Bye for now and see you soon.
Ciao.